So I have to say that everyone in this audience is probably having the same feelings I did the first time I saw it, which was, what the hell was that? <laughs> that was so much, but it was amazing. So Robert, I'm gonna talk with you because you wrote this with your brother, and I know that, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, like, with all the flatulent and masturbation and two men in a room, I feel like you were working something out, maybe? <laughs> with like, maybe some childhood memories you wanted to like work out? Or maybe not, I could be wrong. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm, right. I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm seven years older than, than than Max, and uh, so we had a more distant relationship until um, recently. So uh, there was more, there was, there was less of that kind of specific stuff and more of me just being uh, a, a mean, tormenting lighthouse keeper to his poor suffering assistant. Um, Max is a very nice guy. He makes me seem like a complete jerk. What did you say? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that the flashlands does come from personal experience, but not with my brother. Um, working in the dregs of New York independent film world, uh, there is a lot of low budget projects where I was sharing close quarters with flashlight colleagues. Yeah, yeah. Anyone who's like volunteered at a film festival where you have to do an unhappy marriage of like cohabitation, I felt that um, watching this at the Cannes Film Festival. Um, the other thing I was gonna ask, because the film is so detailed, I, it, it jumps off the screen, how it, it almost feels like a documentary not like a period piece because it's so tangible what that time period is. And I know that that's not by accident. It was intense research that you guys did to get there. So just like let everyone know kind of what your process was to research the film. Um, it's fairly easy to research a lighthouse movie. Uh, it's much more, I mean, people like lighthouses. A lot of people like lighthouses. Not that many people care about uh, and an agricultural lifestyle in colonial New England compared to lighthouses. Um, so there's tons of books available. Uh, you can also get the Lighthouse Keeper's Manual that Rob refers to and reads in the film on Google Books. Uh, so that was very helpful. Uh, another thing that was wonderful uh, is that photography had been invented in the 19th century. So uh, you can see uh, exactly what these lighthouse stations look like and what the lighthouse keepers were wearing. Um, so there's there are lots of lots of resources available uh, to un for understanding the physical material world and uh, the, the details of what would go on in, in, in these gentlemen's lives. Obviously, there's not a lot of talk about masturbation and flatulence in these sources, but I have a feeling those things probably happened in the 19th century. Um, and then uh, when it comes to the language, that, that is harder, uh, but you look at the Lighthouse Keeper's journals and, and things and, and interviews with lumberjacks, uh, and uh, being a New England piece in this period, you're gonna open up Melville, and why not look at Coleridge and Stevenson while you're at it. Uh, finally, uh, Sarah Orne Jewett, from the good old state of Maine. She was writing in this period and interviewing uh, working men in, in coastal Maine and, and women, and, and writing her main stories in dialect phonetically. Uh, so it was with her work that I could create, that my brother and I could really create these two uh, dialects with any kind of specificity. Yeah, and Willem, I definitely want to talk to you in a moment about the dialect, but first I want to talk about you joining because I know you've said that you sought Robert out after seeing The Witch, which I hope everyone here has seen if not go out immediately. Um, but what was it about that particular film that made you say, okay, this was this guy's first film, but this is not a one-trick pony, like I've got to work with him uh, as quick as I can? Just, it was so specific, the world was so complete. And I felt like, um, you know, a period film where you can really enter that world in a clean way. 
you're not pointing at anything. I think it comes from the theory of detail and a good imagination about what you thought that time was. Well researched. I just, I just had that uh, sense that it was a film where a world was realized in a real full way. And I just wanted to find out who made that film. So I tracked it down one meeting with him and I said, listen, uh, if you got something, I'd love to work with you. Was that like a fun phone call when you were like, oh my God, the license calling me? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, it did. It was a massive hero of mine, and only more so after working with him. But, but I was, I was intimidated to, to, to meet him. But we, we I, this is a strange compliment to myself when I say it. I realize that, but, but after talking with him for a little while, I felt like we were on the same page. We could get along. Uh, but I, but I also think. Uh, Defoe's body of work growing up informed a lot of my thinking about uh, the craft of acting and storytelling. So maybe it, that, that's that's part of why we, we got along. And Rob, I think uh, you've been very uh, vocal about the fact that after so much success early in your career, you've been particular about the work that you've taken. You worked with Claire Denis and, and just been very specific about the filmmakers you wanted to work with. What was it about this script when you read it that really jumped out that made you say, okay, I definitely want to, to do this particular piece? Um, I think it kind of it's very discordant tones. You know, it's kind of, <laughs> but I, I think it kind of, you, I remember reading it the first time, this, I think you just watched the movie, but it, when you're reading a script, it just takes such a hard left turn halfway through and you're just thinking like how is this going to gel together and I think when you have these kind of just really really angular properties of the story it's kind of it's more interesting to try and figure out some way to mush them together <laughs> and it always kind of comes up with a strange compound uh, performance afterwards. Um, I, I would just well I, you know I remember meeting with you like a couple other times before about other things potentially, and it was always very like cordial and, and, and nice, and uh, and I felt that we had a, a connection that was strong and also like on, on the same page. But after the script, uh, you got the script, you were very like animated, and you had you were, you were like trying to like charge your laptop because you had notes and questions, and you were you know making. Anxiously, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're super hungry, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, 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 difficult enough to talk about the script at the best time to record. But, but you, 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 you showed me a, a YouTube video of a, a sort of growy guy who looked like he might be in finance uh, in, in like a blue Oxford shirt who was wasted and he was screaming. Like and dancing, like I'm a demon, I'm a demon, I'm a demon, and what was he saying? He said, "I'm gonna teach you how to fuck." Oh. Um, <laughs> wow, this Q and A took a turn. <laughs> well, and, and amazing. I can tell you, it was amazing. Well, and you said, "Is this the movie?" And I said, "That's the movie." <laughs> So it's just some weird dude saying, I want to F, you know? I think he's on a lot of ecstasy. He's like, he's like, and it's a guy kind of um, taunting him, going like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? He's literally just rolling him. Like, <laughs> but, 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 but just, I think the, the, the amount of dedication that he put into saying that led me to believe he was saying I'm a demon and I felt I've never seen a demon before until now. <laughs> I mean, I thought this movie was, like, excuse me, batshit, but the, the like making of behind the scenes, can we, A24, can we get a featurette because we need to find more about this stuff. Um, I, I do want to talk about the details of it because it, it's, I, I haven't read this script, but I did read the script for The Witch, and the thing that it struck me was just how detailed. I mean, that script was bulletproof. Like, you could feel it and, and touch it, and you understood everything of it. So I want to talk to the actors specifically about how those details were put into the production design, because I know there's little details that you can't see 
when you first watch this film that are just very specific from either the costumes or the things that were decorated into that lighthouse, which if you guys didn't know, they actually built that lighthouse from scratch ground up. So if you guys could talk about, yeah, just like, yeah, the, the location that you were kind of stuck in for the whole shoot. Uh, we were in this place called Cape Bushy in um, Nova Scotia. The very southern tip. And uh, it was a very typical kind of fishing village. Um, the lighthouse, I mean, it was, it was first, the first time you see the, saw the lighthouse there, the first time you saw the set. And it was, it's kind of astonishing how it's set. And I think even the people who lived in Cape Bushy wanted to keep the lighthouse there afterwards because it just suited that. So, and so he and he, it was very much the same with, with the lighthouse. Um, and, 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 you know, always by the end, he's, he's instructing me. Uh, and uh, so really the trouble was just that this all came together so quickly that, that we didn't have a lot of time to build all this stuff. We were building this entire lighthouse station on a rock it, it, with, uh, this, it, with incredibly inhospitable weather. There were three nor'easters that blew over when we were, when we were building this thing. Um, and uh, the, in, in the winter, so cold that the salt water was freezing on, on the scaffolding. Um, we had to halt the build a couple times. And, you know, we had everyone in Nova Scotia who could hold a hammer just to get it done in time and bring in people from Prince Edward Island. But, um, you know, Craig, 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 always delivers more than he says he can. That's just the kind of guy he is. And, and he'll say something's impossible, uh, and then the next week he'll sort it out how it's impossible. And you need someone like that uh, to make a 70-foot lighthouse tower that can sustain gale force winds, people being up there, uh, the lens that literally weighs a ton. Especially when everyone's saying, like, you're gonna have to build half of it and then do the rest with CG. But that's, there's no fun in that. <laughs> I'm glad you, you know, pushed back on that because again, it's, it's tangible. It just, it jumps off the screen. Um, uh, as I told Rob uh, backstage, um, I was at the screening at the Cannes Film Festival at like eight o'clock in the morning. And this film, if y'all thought it was weird tonight, let me tell you, jet lagged at eight o'clock in the morning was way worse. Um, but it was, it was so, um, I don't know, the being in that room and seeing it for the first time is something that I can't describe. But 
Um, I'm gonna bring back up the Q&A route because it's still one of the funniest moments of my life when you're describing your rehearsal period and you said it was three weeks and Robert was like, it was a week. <laughs> it was not that long. So I'm not gonna beat you up about it, but what made it feel like time stopped? Like what was it about that rehearsal period that made it feel that it was longer than it was? <laughs> I think I finally figured out what I, I, I think that was just so fun to me. I think when you when you have a good script and you kind of know and especially when you really like it and you get excited about it and you kind of then the only place left for your um, mind to go is that you are the one who's gonna mess it up. <laughs> especially when there's only two people in it. I know women's not gonna mess it up. <laughs> 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 Like, I just, I, I can really, I can get it talking the talk in a meeting, but I never have any idea if I can deliver or not. <laughs> well, you did deliver. Everyone on the stage delivered, and the proof is in the pudding. Um, for those of you that saw it tonight, please tell everyone else this film how brilliant it is. One, the director's vote and I can, still 93% certified fresh around tomatoes, and yeah, I just want to thank the cast and filmmakers of the Lighthouse and the gentlemen for this conversation, and uh, thank you all for listening. Thank <laughs> you.